friends welcome back to HTL lectures today we are going to restart our CA foundation economics lecture it's been a long time that we have stopped our CA foundation class now we are going to restart because many students seems it's useful my video for their examination so I think this is the time to restart my CA economics lecture and also if you have any issues in the economics topic then you can uh, ask me in the whatsapp number that I have uh, given in the description or you can uh, mention it in our group we have group in telegram and whatsapp it is not active I am not active in that group because uh, I was very busy with my work but uh, now I am trying to schedule my timing for the students online students get some discussion of the to on the topics okay so let's start with our economics topic in the last video we have stopped at the types of price elasticity there are five types like uh, unitary elastic perfectly elastic perfectly inelastic relatively elastic relatively inelastic this we have discussed in the previous lecture if you have not watched my previous lectures then you can go to my playlist and you can see there is a CA foundation economics playlist from there you can watch each and every video that I have uploaded okay you can also click on the bell icon if you want my uh, new video uploads so today let's restart with the balance chapters the remaining portion is elasticity of demand we have already discussed elasticity of demand it is a degree of responsiveness of quantity demanded due to change in determinants of demand there are four types of elasticity of demand price elasticity income elasticity cross elasticity and advertisement elasticity we have discussed all these types now in this video we are going to study about different methods of calculating price elasticity there, there are different methods of calculating price elasticity there is a mistake in this heading it is not type of price elasticity it is method method of calculating calculating price elasticity of demand you can see that there are four methods for calculating price elasticity first one is percentage method second one is point method third one is arc method fourth one is total outlay method or expenditure method so there are four types of calculating price elasticity of demand we will discuss each and every uh, methods so let's go to our material here you can see that price elasticity there is a heading called price elasticity you can see here under this price elasticity we have different methods mentioned first one what is price elasticity we have already discussed we will once again go through it it is a measurement the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price when other things being equal when other things are being equal when the price changes there is a change in quantity demanded uh, this is what we have studied in the law of demand okay so in order to calculate the elasticity of the law of demand or the price elasticity we have the first method that is price elasticity is equal to price elasticity is represented as EP elasticity of price is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded by percentage change in price see this formula here they have not mentioned the name of this formula this formula is known as percentage method this is our first method of calculating price elasticity percentage method what is the formula price elasticity EP is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded by percentage change in price that means if there is a change in demand by 20 percentage and there is a change in price by 10 percentage okay then what happens then your elasticity is equal to 2 
stress is equal to 2. This is how you calculate in percentage method. Uh, there is an expanded uh, formula for this percentage method. Price elasticity is equal to delta Q by delta P into P by Q. This is a universal formula which we commonly use in all the materials of economics. Okay, here this formula is nothing but an extension. Extension. of what extension of this formula this formula that is discussed here in these steps in these steps when you go through these steps you can understand the comparisons okay uh, you can see percentage change in quantity demanded percentage change in quantity demanded can be written as change in quantity by original quantity into 100 right what how you calculate the formula uh, of percentage percentage means what is the change that you will uh, mention in the numerator and the basic quantity basic quantity that you will mention in the denominator uh, then uh, you will uh, multiply it by 100 then you will get a percentage right this is what we have expanded this change in quantity demanded in the same way change in price means Percentage change in price means change in price by original price into 100. So, here 100, 100 cancelled. You can see here 100, 100 cancelled. Okay. Now, these changes, they can, you can replace this. Uh, this can be taken as a reciprocal, right? So, you take it as a reciprocal. Then, what happens is that change in quantity demanded by original quantity he is mentioned here here it was divided by change in price by original price this will be taken as reciprocal then it will be multiplied and original price by change in price this is how this formula is derived this change in quantity this change in quantity is delta q by original quantity means q into now original price means p change in price means delta p so this is what we call delta q by delta p into p by q this denominator is just replaced into left and right okay this is how we derive the formula of price elasticity using the percentage method i hope you understood this is the basic uh, formula of calculating price elasticity okay here they have mentioned ep is nothing but price elasticity q means quantity p means price here you have to understand quantity means nothing but original quantity there will be two quantity because we are calculating the we are calculating the change right the difference so there will be two price and two quantities so you have to take the original price or the first price as a base price and the same uh, way you have to take the quantity also and i have given in the presentation i have mentioned here yeah here you can see price elasticity is equal to delta q by delta p into p by q here the p means its original price or initial price and q means original quantity by initial quantity Hope you understood. Delta means very small change. Okay, change in price or change in quantity is represented as delta. Now, this point we have already discussed in the previous video. Since price and quantity are inversely related, you know that price and quantity is inversely related uh, in the law of demand. So, when the quantity demanded is varying, it is uh, just as an opposite to the price change when the price increases quantity demanded decreases so there is an inverse relationship since the price and quantity are inversely related with a few exemptions there are few exemptions that we have already discussed price elasticity is negative so the price and quantity are inversely related that means the price elasticity is negative when you calculate the uh, use the price elasticity using this formula you will get the answer as negative Nothing to worry, that is the correct answer. Uh, the negative value is the representation of the opposite relationship. Okay. But for the sake, but for the sake of convenience, we ignore the negative sign 
and consider only the numeric value of the elasticity. So here some students have some doubt that sir in the examination what if the negative value is not given. See you have got elasticity price elasticity is equal to 1 that means minus 1 okay in the examination if the minus 1 is not given then what you do if the minus 1 is not given you have to take the 1 as a price elasticity because it is understood that 1 means the price elasticity is considered as a 1 and the minus value is ignored for the convenience of our calculation okay so uh, universally it is accepted if you have not written the negative value also that is okay but if you have both minus 1 and plus 1 in the option then you have to choose minus 1 okay now you can see the illustrations here illustrations 1 the price of commodity decreases from 6 to 4 that means price what is the initial price here from 6 to 4 the initial price is 6 then it is changed to 4 so initial price is 6 and delta p the change in price is 2 so you got delta p as 2 and p equal to 6 okay the quantity demanded of the good increases from 10 unit to 15 unit from 10 unit that means quantity initial quantity is 10 that is q is 10 and the delta q q is 10 delta q is equal to 5 now you have to calculate uh, using the formula what is the formula delta q by delta p into p by q okay when you calculate that you will get the answer as minus 1.5 minus 1.5 the next illustration is the simple illustration that means here the value or price is not given the price or the unit is not given instead it gives a percentage that is 5 percentage fall in price that means percentage change in price is minus is 5 and for for a good lead uh, leads to a 15 percentage rise there is a 15 percentage rise that means percentage change in quantity demanded is 15 okay then 15 by 5 then you get 3 so this is how we calculate the price elasticity using the percentage method the third illustration is also it's like the price is given price is given means you will get delta p and p here okay if the price elasticity of demand for the product is 1.5 the price elasticity is given here original quantity demanded is 30 units calculate the new quantity demanded that means you have to calculate the delta q first and you can uh, either add or less with this 30 how you will understand whether to add or less here you have to understand there is a price decrease when there is a price decrease quantity demanded increases so the new quantity will be increased quantity from 30 units it means 30 plus 18 you will get 48 units okay this is very easy uh, topic but i just uh, want you to understand it clearly that's why i have just explained all the three illustrations now next method of calculating price elasticity is point method in the point elasticity we measure elasticity at a given point on demand curve here in the point elasticity what we do is that we will draw a demand curve from the y axis to x axis which is touching both the axis okay then on each of the point you can plot and elasticity that is the logic of point elasticity okay let's see let's see point elasticity makes use of derivatives rather than finite changes in price and quantity here we are not saying that this much price this much quantity is changed but we are just saying the elasticity we cannot say that complete value but we can give a derivation derivation of the change 
here you have a formula also for point elasticity that is EP price elasticity is equal to minus DQ by DP into P by Q here it is nothing but the same formula that you see in the percentage method here the difference is instead of delta we get derivative D okay where dq and dq by dp is the derivative of quantity with respect to price at a point on demand curve and p and q are the price and quantity at that point okay now for understanding the point method you don't have to read all these things you just have to know only this logic lower segment by upper segment when you divide lower segment by upper segment what is the value you get that is the elasticity in the point method let's see this is uh, my graph this is my graph okay i have plotted some points here okay on the demand curve there is a y axis, there is a point touching on y axis, there is a point touching on x axis, there is a point in the midpoint, there is a midpoint, okay, R is a midpoint. Now, I just want to know the elasticity of R. Elasticity of R, how can I calculate? So, let's go to this logic. Lower segment by upper segment, which is the lower segment? R, T. It means capital rt that is the lower segment what is the upper segment rt same but the small t okay here when you are at the midpoint what is the logic the distance here in the rt and distance here in the rt small rt is same that means whatever is your value that is exactly equal i am just giving here a value here the distance rt distance is assumed as 2 here this distance is also assumed as 2 so what is it 2 by 2 so the dot total distance is 4 and you have divided both at a midpoint r into 2 okay so what is the value you get here at the midpoint you get the value as equal to 1 okay at the midpoint your elasticity is equal to 1 at the midpoint the elasticity is equal to 1 i hope you understood now let's plot plot a point in the x axis now what happens in the x axis in the x axis you don't have a lower segment there is no lower segment that means your lower, lower segment is 0. What is your upper segment? That is capital T to small t. According to our value, you get 0 by 4. Whatever value you divide with 0 is 0. That means your elasticity is equal to 0 at x axis at x axis your elasticity equal to 0 okay now the same way at point y y axis the y axis what is that here the lower segment is tt you have a lower segment but you don't have upper segment upper segment is 0 upper segment is 0 means in mathematical expression when you divide a new value by 0 then that value is undefined that is infinity can be anything okay so here in the y axis your elasticity is equal to infinity so we have plotted three elasticities now already we have said that there are five types of price elasticity first one elasticity is equal to 1 that is at midpoint then elasticity equal to 0 this is at midpoint 
he says at x axis now elasticity is equal to infinite that is at y axis so this is the three elasticities that you have plotted in point method now it's not over you can plot other two elasticities also that is elasticity more than one and elasticity less than one so for this let's plot a point here in between the midpoint and x-axis i am dividing uh, the midpoint and x-axis a now at point a what is my elasticity at point a my elasticity is equal to lower segment what is that 80 divided by a small t upper segment is a to t. this is my upper segment this is my lower segment okay now the a t the capital a t says that here already we have said that this distance is 2 so i am dividing this point equally this midpoint and x-axis equally that means my lower segment is equal to 1 the total value between midpoint and x-axis is 2 so i am dividing it equally so the point between a to t this capital a to t is equal to 1 and the upper segment the upper segment is 2 plus 1 that is from midpoint to y axis it is already 2 from r to a from midpoint to a it is 1 so you have total 3 so 1 by 3 when you divide 1 by 3 what you get it's point 33 okay it's point 33 that is nothing but elasticity less than 1 so any point between midpoint and x axis means your elasticity is less than 1 your elasticity is less than 1 okay hope you understood that point now the next point that is i am plotting a point between midpoint and y axis and i am saying it as b so at point b i have a lower segment which is bt and i have upper segment which is b small t so my bt small lower segment is 3 that means here 2 plus 1 okay 3 when my upper segment is 1 that is the value is 3 so here my elasticity is more than 1 so we can say that any point between midpoint and y axis there the elasticity is more than 1 okay you have some explanations here you can also read that but the basic logic we have already understood now let us read it again where dq by dp is derived is a derivative of quantity with respect to price at a point on demand curve p and q are the point and quantity at that point so price and quantity at that point point elasticity is therefore the product of price quantity ratio at the particular point on the demand curve and the reciprocal of the demand line it is to be noted that elasticity is different at different point on the same demand curve given a straight line demand curve the point elasticity at any point can be round by using the formula what is the formula that is lower segment by upper segment okay using this formula we have studied the point method okay that is the second method of calculating price elasticity now the third method third method is arc method what is arc method arc method is nothing but an extended version of percentage method so first let us uh, read the definition when the price change is somewhat larger or when price elasticity is to be found between two prices the question arises which price and quantity should be taken as base see 
in the percentage method we don't have any confusion we have taken the initial price but the logic here asked in the art method is that why don't you take the new price or new quantity for calculating the percentage method so if you take the new price or new quantity then the value of elasticity may be changed so you are not considering uh, the average or you are not considering both the changes okay so this is the logic behind arc method this is that when the price change is somewhat larger or when the price elasticity is found to be between two prices the question arises which price and quantity should be taken as base this is because elasticity found by using original price and quantity figures as base will be different from the one derived from using the new price and quantity figures therefore in order to avoid the confusion generally midpoint method is used midpoint method is used generally midpoint method this midpoint method is called as arc method okay the formula is nothing but the extension of our percentage method so you can see the formula here ep is equal to q1 minus q2 by q1 plus q2 into p1 plus p2 by p1 minus p2 here this one this one is nothing but delta q that is change in quantity and here this is also nothing but delta p now the change here is in the next thing that is we have taken in the percentage method p by q here we are not taking p by q but the midpoint of them midpoint of them means what let's see what is the midpoint of p let's see midpoint of p is i'll explain here P1 plus P2 by 2. This is the midpoint of P1 and P2. Right? Have any doubt? So we have taken the midpoint of P divided by. Now we have to take the midpoint of Q also. Quantity also. Divided by Q1 plus q2 by 2 here what happens is that 2 2 is cancelled that means when you take the reciprocal whatever way what is the basic mathematics logic you have in that way you can solve it okay whatever way you will get the value as we already discussed what delta q by delta p this is nothing but this one this one now into p by q instead of p by q we'll use p1 plus p2 we, are, we will not divide by 2 because it is already cancelled by q1 plus q2 this is the formula this is the only difference between the arc method and percentage method hope you understood okay so using this formula you can calculate the price elasticity in arc method okay now the fourth method fourth method is total outlay method of calculating price elasticity total outlay method this i will not explain with this points i will go to my presentation here i have a presentation expenditure method uh, it is an outlay method or expenditure method in expenditure method the basic logic is that there are only three elasticities that you can put First one is unitary elastic. Either you can plot unitary elastic or you can plot elastic or you can plot inelastic. There is no perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic using the expenditure method. You cannot do that in an expenditure method. Okay. That is the logic of expenditure method. Now, how you will calculate this elasticity? In all the other methods, all the other three methods, we have used price and quantity demanded to calculate the elasticity right in the percentage method you have used delta q by delta p 
into p by q that means quantity and price is used and in the point method also you have used the quantity and price for calculating elasticity even if you have a plotted it in the uh, in the diagram that is uh, in the x axis you have uh, quantity and in the y axis you have price that is the logic of elasticity okay uh, this uh, law of demand demand curve and in the arc method is also price and quantity here we are not comparing the price and quantity instead of quantity we are using the expenditure we are using the expenditure to compute our elasticity so let's go there are three elasticities here first point when price changes when there is an increase or decrease in price price change can be either increase or decrease when there is a price change the expenditure is remaining same expenditure means i have expended 100 rupees for a particular product okay if the price is increased of that commodity i will still spend only 100 rupees that means my quantity i will be reducing I mean i will not be buying the same quantity with the high price because i am not ready to spend more than 100 rupees for that product sorry when there is an increase or decrease in price but the expenditure on that product remains same then it is unitary elastic it is unitary elastic that means expenditure remaining same same whatever may be the change in price okay that is unitary elastic second one is when the price changes when the price increases or decreases expenditure changes in opposite direction that means when the price increases expenditure decreases when the price decreases expenditure increases opposite direction then the product is elastic then it is elastic means when uh, when there is an increase in price what i do is that i will reduce my expenditure i was before spending 100 rupees when there is an increase in price i will reduce it to 90 or 80 so i will reduce in the same way if there is a decrease in price i will expend more than 100 rupees i am ready to expend more when there is a decrease in price so when there is an opposite relationship between price and expenditure then you can say that it is an elastic it is elastic demand the third point when the price changes expenditure changes in same direction that means when the price is increasing expenditure sorry there is a uh, mistake here in the arrow mark the logic is that when the price increases expenditure also increases when the price decreases expenditure decreases that means in the same direction when the price and expenditure moves in same direction it is inelastic the product is inelastic so this is the logic of expenditure method there is nothing to worry about this method you can just by heart if you want or you can understand the logic and study this is the three points in the expenditure method so the same thing you can uh, plot in the material also in the material they have explained it here i have just yellow marked when as a result of change in price of a good total expenditure on the good or total revenue received from that good remains the same the price elasticity of the good is unitary is equal to unit means expenditure remains the same when there is a change in price that is it unit now when as a result of increase in price total expenditure made on the goods falls or when as a result of decrease in price expenditure made goes increase okay when there is a decrease in price the expenditure increases opposite direction then it is it is greater than unitary that means elastic elastic now the third point is also when as a result of increase in price total expenditure increases when decrease in price good falls okay it is, then it is less than unitary it is less than unitary that is inelastic hope you understood this point so with this we have uh, completed the methods of calculating price elasticity now the next topic that we are discussing is determinants of price elasticity of demand see we have already discussed about the determinants of demand okay this is also similar to that you can find many common points here and there here we are talking about determinants of price elasticity price elasticity what are the determinants that will fix the price elasticity what that will fix the movement of the price elasticity okay so let's uh, just talk about the important areas only we will be discussing only the underlying point here availability of substitute when there are availability of substitutes when there is more than one product which gives the same utility then the price elasticity is very high because when my product changes with price 
uh, my consumers will be varying from my product to other product because there is substitute for my product okay so availability of substitute will give more elastic for the product we can say that goods which typically have close or perfect substitute have high elastic demand curve okay if there is a close or perfect substitute then the elasticity is very high that's it that is the first point second point is position of a commodity in a consumer's budget that means I am buying a product which is using my major proportion of my budget if I have 10,000 rupees on a monthly basis I am buying a certain product in a major proportion that is 20 percentage of my income is used for that product means that product is very important for me so for that product the greater the proportion of income spent on a commodity generally greater will be its elasticity of demand and vice versa third point is nature of the need that a commodity satisfy what is the need that my commodity satisfy if it is possible to postpone the consumption of a particular good then such goods will have elastic demand why because if the price is very high i will not buy now i will reduce the consumption if the price is increasing i'll reduce the consumption because i am intending that i can buy it in the future and so that is a, a elastic demand consumption of necessary goods cannot be postponed if the consumption of necessary goods that means uh, your uh, fundamental needs like food shelter water and this this is necessary goods for this we cannot postpone so these products are inelastic the demand is inelastic okay now number of uses to which a commodity can be put for a particular product i am using it for more than one purpose so that commodity i am using in very high proportion so that it is more elastic the more the proportion use of a commodity the greater will be its price elasticity and vice versa if the price is very high i will reduce its consumption i will uh, reduce its usage to certain important areas only okay next point time period longer the time period one has the more compl completely one can adjust in response to a high price petrol price one can in short run make fewer trips by car see i can use the car for a long period right so if the petrol is very high i will use what i will reduce the usage of my car and i will go by bus or any other uh, any other fuel efficient vehicles okay i will be uh, using that so in that case if the high if the product is having long time long time period then what i do is that i will be having greater elasticity there that is why uh, that is what they are saying in response to a high petrol price one can in the short run make fewer trips in long run not only one can make fewer trips but he can purchase a car with a smaller uh, engine capacity when the time comes for replacing the existing one okay in the long run what happens is that uh, if the petrol is uh, still going up means you will go for some engine eff uh, efficient vehicles okay that's it time period consumer habit if a consumer is habitual consumer no matter how much its price change the demand of the commodity will be inelastic if he is habitual that he whatever may be the price he will be uh, habitual to a particular product or particular demand means his habit will not be changing so that is inelastic now tied demand the demand for those goods which are tied to others is normally inelastic as against those demand is of autonomous nature Tied demand means like complementary goods it's normally inelastic uh, it is uh, when it is tied to another product means uh, its price variation will not be affecting the consumption because it is used only when certain other product is used like uh, the petrol petrol is used because of vehicle so uh, the demand is tied demand right so if there is no vehicle that we are using we don't have any vehicle here so that means you don't have demand for the particular product okay so it is inelastic and which is autonomous in nature then more elastic examples printer and ink catering that is co uh, this complementary goods or tied product now price range price range means the goods which are in very high price or in very low price have inelastic demand the product is very high means 
the price of product is very high means it is a luxurious product for which there is no price variation uh, there is no demand variation because it is demanded only when you have a, achieved a high status that means at that time you will not be considering the price you will be considering only the status in the society okay so and also the very low price product uh, if the product is very low that means uh, normally it is a necessary goods or uh, which is very inconsiderable in your budget so in that case also you will not be considering the price it is inelastic but those which is in middle range have elastic demand here middle range low range high range all depends on the consumer's perspective each consumers have their own high range low range and medium range okay so that's it for determinants of price elasticity of demand now we have demand forecasting this topic we will discuss in next video so friends thank you thanks for watching if you have any doubts or any problem with these topics then you can uh, text me in the whatsapp or you can text in the comment box or there is a telegram group that also you can utilize so friends once again thank you thanks for watching see you soon with next video